Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, man. How hey, are buddy, you? Hey, buddy. How are you? It's, it's been up, a while. Man. Here. Yeah, we're on the air. We got uh, Bill Burns studio, Joe Rosa, Jim Norton, and me and Ant. When do the funny people get in? <laughs> <laughs> God How you damn, doing, man? Chris. Can't complain. Well, uh, you're done with Broadway. Before you even talk about uh, anything else, I had to say to you publicly, you were fucking amazing in your uh, you. in your play. You're you're a much better actor than I realized. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You know. After Pootie Tang, you know, it's all uphill. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pootie Tang. I never saw it. What? How do you not see Pootie well, Tang? Well, Louie told us the story about how, like, you know, you have one vision, but then sometimes the studio steps in and they, they do what they got to do. Well, and then... when we do Pootie Tang on Broadway, you're all invited. No, oh, right on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that that would happen. <laughs> like, there's no doubt that that could actually happen. Can I tip my... Also, I've, I've, Chris, I never really met you before, but I've always wanted to tell you this. Uh, me and my friends in high school, before I ever did comedy, were obsessed with CB4. I'm still obsessed with it. I think it's hilarious. And I tip my hat to you for recognizing the utter genius of Charlie Murphy. Thank you. Before anybody did. Mm. Before you know, anybody. I Chappelle is such a genius because all those Charlie Murphy stories that are on the Chappelle show, mm -hmm. he told them on the set of CB4. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew all those stories years and years 15 years in advance, and then I'm watching Chappelle's show. I'm like, oh, my God, I could have had all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're kind of like the college coach. that You could have drafted, like, Jeter to play for you, but you just kind of, like, in, enjoyed watching him and then exactly. ignored him. Exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, man. <laughs> Obviously, the 12th selection, Chris Rock selects Ken O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Marino reference, nobody? How's it going? No, I got it. I'm a Jets fan. Hey, O'Brien's, hey, you know, better than Sanchez. <laughs> yeah. uh, old pick six. Yeah, Sanchez, <laughs> I don't know. He makes us a little nervous as uh, Jets like Sanchez, fans. I Sanchez, but O'Brien, you know. What, what do you think of Tebow? You want to talk football? Wow! <laughs> no kidding! <laughs> Wow, man, I guess other teams are going to start letting linebackers play quarterback. <laughs> yeah, he's 6-1 uh, and one as a starter now, and it's very uncon unconventional, as we all know. Yeah, but it's, it's like baseball. It's, you, know, it, it, you know, like in baseball, the guy gets hot, then, you know, go, what, when he goes through the league a second time, let me, yes. let me see what happens. When they figure him out. When they figure out that Prohibition-era offense that they're running. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pitch, pitch it to fucking yeah. Curly or Larry. <laughs> they need to update I swear it. to God, I saw that offense on the Three Stooges one time. <laughs> hey, lateral it to me, Mo. <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we missed that. What was that? I'm sorry, Chris. We were lucky. If Tebow plays like there's no black guys on the field. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he loves his God. He wants everyone to know how much oh, yeah. he loves God. Which, you know. No, in defense of him. God actually decided to back a shitty football player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's working for him. What was Bill going to say? In defense of Tebow, he, oh, he talked about Jesus in college. He hasn't done it yet. They just keep putting the camera on him when he uh, starts speaking in tongues mm. every time they uh, <laughs> kick a field goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a like, hobbit. Like, like God really cares. Sounds like an auctioneer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just know everybody. <laughs> I just, everybody in the red states is so are so excited. This is has got to be their 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 guy for the, like the like the last twenty oh, years. Oh yeah, very religious and, he and he's a, winning. He wears a vest. He's yeah. clean cut. He's into Jesus. He's for, a good boy. Pretty amazing what he's doing. Though. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, Chris, obviously, uh, you know, fucking Patrice. We're all just obviously. You want me to replace Patrice, and I accept. Yes. yes. Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> we're, we're sick over it. It's this is uh, everyone has been saying how rough this one is. This is just a rough one. It is a rough one because I mean, first of all, people don't realize how full of life this guy was. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, like, just absolutely filled up a room when he walked in a room, and he was so funny, and he was just. He was just figuring out what he did. You know what I mean? He was just figuring out how to take that thing he did mm. in the restaurant and put it on stage. You know what I mean? Yes. The thing he did off stage was coming on stage, and he was, you know, it's it's it's, it's like the comedic Lynn Bias, if anything. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like mm. this guy was really getting ready to 
to we were all getting ready to have work for Patrice O'Neill. That's basically <laughs> what was getting ready to happen. He, he was figuring it all out right in front of our eyes. He was uh. he was there, man. Yeah, I know. When when Elephant in the Room came out, I was excited for him and I was nervous. I was like, is he gonna make me look like a child? Because like he was that. <laughs> Like, it was literally what he was saying. I almost felt like once it was his to take once he just decided he wanted it. That's it. That's the level. That's yeah. what I always told funny. him. Yeah. Right, right. When I he... always told him, like, look around. Do you see anybody as funny as you? Really? Really? <laughs> yeah, uh, Jimmy said it last week. He could be funny with anyone. You can't think of one person he wouldn't be as funny or funnier. Like, any... <laughs> Any comic you could put him in the room with who's ever worked, and he would be comfortable being funny with them. Yes, yes. I mean, we're all established guys here. Is any one of us, does any one of us really want to follow the guy? <laughs> right, no. No, he used to hold uh. court. with. He actually was so funny, he could get comedians who are always trying to top people's stories to actually shut up and become audience members. <laughs> yeah. Like that time he went at it with the, the transvestite out in front of that. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Dude, that. It was literally just some transvestite was coming down the street, and he was just in one of those moods where he felt like fucking with somebody, and he fucked with this transvestite, and she immediately came right back at him. Said, remember that line? She said, "You got so many spaces between your teeth. Looks like your tongue's in jail." <laughs> that's what. That's what started it. Jesus Christ! And he hit her with shit just as big, dude. And we just sat there. It was like it was a comedic version. You ever see that that tape of Biggie when he was just got in that rap battle in the middle of like the purest yeah, right, form? Right. It was like the purest form of comedy. There was no security. There was no crowd. Like a crowd just developed around, around it, what the around fuck the was happening. And he just sat there. <laughs> and, you know, she hit him with a couple of stock lines, and he, like, Ali, leaned on the ropes, let the he-she <laughs> punch herself out, and then he just fucking destroyed her. And But it was it was unbelievable. I remember uh, just really in that moment going, this guy is, like, this guy's he is truly special. Mm -hmm. You know, you're really not, really not going to see another one. That was a one-off. Yep. That, that was yeah. it. He's fucking, his ability. I showed my parents, my parents were up visiting this week, and I showed them Elephant in the Room. Because they didn't know who Patrice was. They just knew that he was. I had a friend that passed or whatever. And uh, I showed it to him. My dad's a Catholic church deacon. <laughs> and my dad was red faced and laughing hysterically at Patrice going, Why can't we have harassment day? You know, excuse me, how, I was wondering, you know, would you suck my dick in the broom closet? Like the fact that he can make a fucking man of the cloth laugh as hard as like Bill or me or any, you know, whatever. It's fucking, it's uncanny, man. Uncanny ability. There was nothing better than seeing Patrice meet somebody for the first time who was, like, impressed with themselves, and they thought they were on some oh. level of accomplishment. I saw him one time. He made this fucking white dude, a 50-year-old guy. You could just tell he ran a company or something, and he just was so used to running shit. As he sat in the crowd, he had this vibe like he was running it, even though he was at the show. <laughs> like, you were performing for him. You know, Patrice got on stage. He just, he, he didn't have to meet the guy, just sensed it. He made this guy so fucking mad. I was actually standing behind the guy, and I could see the anger in the back of his head <laughs> and his shoulders. You know, Patrice had that laugh when he was really getting you that. Oh, yeah. He enjoyed sounded like a, it. Sounded like a fucking trumpet. Yeah. And he's just yeah. laughing in this guy's face. And then he finally said something like, you look like you want to fire me, but you can't. And that was oh, the shit. one that just, that was the one that just Jesus fucking Christ. leveled the room. And I'm so fucking sad about this shit. I, I, I couldn't wait for him to get big because I wanted to see those TMZ guys to try to fuck with him at the airport. Like sure. how much he would have enjoyed that and destroyed him. And they yep. would have, I, I just, it's just, it's the worst fucking thing ever. It's, yeah. it's horrible. There's so many things that were, you know, are going to happen that you would just love to know what his take was going to be on it. You, uh, um, Chris, you helped him too in a weird way because when, when you were on the, the show at K-Rock with us and, and Patrice was in and it kind of turned into an intervention because you were <laughs> telling him that like you wanted him for your show and you know, it, it just, he might have been hard to be here. And you told him kind of with love and with, and, and that really, I think it changed him. It absolutely changed him. I love the guy. I, you know, he's just one of those guys that, so the moment he started getting out of his own way, that's exactly it. It, it, it was all going to open up for him, and and that's what was happening. And I, when I was on the show, and, and by the way, what what I did on the show is what I did to every time I saw him. Right. I was like, "Money, <laughs> you're funnier than everybody. Jesus. Embrace it. Come in." Smile. The, don't, don't worry. The white man does, is not going to beat your ass today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know? And I, I, 
He loved putting a spark to a bridge, though. Oh, <laughs> he loved putting a spark to a bridge. Oh, boy. <laughs> Burn a bridge like that guy. Oh, amazing. And it was fucking hilarious, but, like, also, you'd just know, be like, thinking, what are you oh, doing? Why? Yeah, it's like, why cross it first, it? then burn yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, right. Not tell every bridge. Cross it first, then burn right. it. Right, right, right. <laughs> Did he ever tell you that story when he went into CBS? which was like a notoriously cold room during this era. It was like you walked in, they had the lights low, like that guy who ran that team in the natural. You don't know, like the fucking baseball owner. It, you would just go in there, dude, like already sweating. You'd start tap dancing, and they wouldn't give it up for anything. And he walked in there, maybe tap dance for half a second, and right in the middle of the meeting, you know, you're pitching a show to get a deal. There's a yeah. invisible bag of money sitting there, and he just says, fuck it. And he starts looking at every executive there and starts pointing at everybody. You don't like me, you don't like me, and you don't like me. Just started trashing him. Yeah, Unknown great. comic. And I was, I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, Priest, do you realize that that story was on the other side of Hollywood before you even got back to your <laughs> rented Dodge Neon? Why would you do that? And he's like, man, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking going to sit there and 3,000 miles to have you staring at me? Because <laughs> you got, you cause you got a disc. I audition for Everybody Hates Chris. Didn't mm. know his lines. Like, y'all don't want me. Y'all don't. I'm like, I was dying to give him the part. Oh. Jesus, can you imagine? Yeah, he was defensive sometimes when he didn't need to be. Like, uh, like he, I think sometimes he, he didn't understand how much people would just love him or how much people enjoyed him. Um, he knew he was so funny, but, you know, look, everybody else, he's, you know, he's a comedian. He's fucking got major problems like we all do. Yeah. And I think he never understood that, man, people really will embrace you, and they don't mind your shitty, cynical, you, like, you're, you're so funny, people will just love you. We used to Did joke about the supreme confidence that hacks have. You know what I mean? Uh, they just never, they never question their talent. They just never do. They never question their talent. They just always, they go on stage with this supreme confidence in their, their fucking prolific mediocrity. Always coming out with another special. Always feel like, yeah, America needs to hear this. And then you get a guy like Patrice where it's like, dude, you talking to yourself in the shower should be a fucking album. Yeah. And you, you're trying to get the dude off the... F I don't know, man. That's it's, that, that's probably gonna hurt, you know. It just fucking yeah. hurts. Because he was about to do it on his terms too. You know, we talk about all the bridges he burned, but he was about to do it on his terms. Yeah. Finally, yeah, hey, Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris. The other the other, other moral of the story is, uh, you know, despite you know Biggie being gr you know so big and heavy D and all that. Hey, fat's not good. Yeah. yeah right. Yep. Yeah. And just because. You're popular and you get laid. It doesn't mean you're healthy. <laughs> God yeah. damn! I know. Uh, you know yeah, Louis was saying that. Off of chicken wings from the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Louis was saying he, he's just pissed at himself for not going over there and saying, "Hey, asshole, what are you doing to yourself?" I think people yeah. tried. To be honest, with yeah. You. Patrice is smart enough to know. Yeah, they he's tried. not a dumb guy. He he, he knew. Um, but it's like anything else. When someone's drinking too much or smoking cigarettes, it, it's. It, death is like an intangible, faraway thing. You know it's there, but it's not. Right. It's not like a gun pointed at you. Do you know last Did last night somebody from England, a comedian from England, this is how much this guy's love, flew all the way over here on his own dime to come to the funeral today, and he was telling this story. They were doing a TV taping in London, so of course Patrice doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> He's treating this like you know Europe's Friday night videos. He doesn't <laughs> give a shit, right? And for some reason they had a book in the green room. I guess that was it had a list of all these comedians that were so far down the ladder they didn't have a manager or an agent they just had their phone number their home phone number so Patrice oh, wow. instead of preparing for his set starts calling these <laughs> guys over in England <laughs> called one guy up had a puppet and he goes yeah how much uh, to book the puppet <laughs> I just want to get the puppet I don't I don't want to book you he asked another guy how much do, would it cost to get you to just stop <laughs> Yeah, so nobody was paying attention to the taping. They were all gathering around Patrice once again, holding court, and yeah, everyone yeah. just laughing, like, call another one, oh, call another man. one. Just this... effortless. I totally butchered that story, but no, no, that's, that's, that's him. That is him. Funny, man. The same guy. God. It's Brendan Burns is who you're talking about. Yeah. English comic. Yeah, Brendan Burns. We were, at the, we were doing the Nasty Show in Montreal, and Brendan came over to hang out backstage, and he was, he was going off about English comedy and how good the scene is, and Patrice just goes, English comedy, 
stinks. <laughs> it did a 10 minute just improv <laughs> sketch of an English comedy club. <laughs> and he's just no. going, coming to the stage, Ian Iglepuss. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just making up these ridiculous things. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, get the fuck out of here, you stink. <laughs> Y'all are 30 years behind us. I was the king of England when I went over there. It was so fucking funny, man. Uh, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. And you're God like, wow, damn. I wish I had anything in my act half that fucking funny. Yeah. And he just said that all off the top of his goddamn head for 10 minutes. And that was, you know, it was almost like, like he didn't even write. That was the crazy <laughs> thing about Patrice. He didn't know what was his yeah, material go, go, that go he wrote. Go with that, Opie. Go with I'm that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, he didn't. He just, you like, don't think he wrote it all, it's right? It's like Jay-Z. Jay-Z, Jay I heard he just is all in his fucking head. Right. The same thing. He, he, I don't think, I, I've known him 20 years. Never saw him go, hey, I got to go into CVS and get a notebook. <laughs> right. Never saw him with a laptop. Special, though. I, don't, I don't care what he says. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there were so many times on the radio show we would say, please save that for the air. That's amazing. Like, he, he didn't, he, he couldn't stop. We'd go to break and he was just as funny, just hanging oh, out. Oh, yeah. 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 I haven't yeah, seen Elephant right. in the Room because I don't watch stuff that, you know, you just don't want to see what the guys you know are doing because it really is fucking good. Man. I watched a clip, I just the, a clip yeah. about being mean to animals, and it was like, God, a fucking yeah. mind was oh. great. Yeah, he nailed it. Mm -hmm. You never want he to understand that it. your peer is so great. Like, you know what I mean? No, nobody recognizes that they're, they're working with, with such greatness. And, and it's like when someone dies, then you reflect. Right. But while you're seeing it, you don't realize. He's like, God damn. Shit. He's got a CD coming out called Mr. P, Mr. too. Mr. P, yeah. That he was putting together. This isn't one of those things where the family rushed out because, uh, you know, he died. Oh, no, he was, he was this responsible is, for it. This is something he wanted out there. And, uh, yeah, they're taking pre-orders now. And, and Jonathan said the other day, it's brilliant. This thing, Mr. P, is brilliant. Yeah, and it's available on iTunes and uh, Amazon now for pre-order if you guys want to go out and get it. And the money's going to the family. Yeah, the, the, the CD company it. actually switched the deal to give his family more yep. money. They, yep. they, they, they're taking a lower percentage. Yep. Hey, was any, anybody else on that benefit we did that one time for the rescue dogs? No. You was that a Steinberg no. gig? So we did this gig, and it, it was like we show up. You figured it's for rescue dogs. We're working for free. Everyone's going to be paying attention. It was this Manhattan just who's who shit. And nobody was paying attention. The only two people paying attention were two cast members of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. This was like fucking eight years <laughs> yeah. ago. And uh, so I go up first and like an idiot, I go right into my act and I just immediately start bombing. Nobody's paying attention to me. I'm working for free. And all I can hear is Patrice laughing oh, ah, shit, yeah. at the back of the fucking thing, right? Each one of us tried to adjust somehow to kill and none of us could we all ate our balls and then patrice went up there and opened with talking about how he had a puppy for breakfast and went through the whole preparation of it <laughs> and just pissed everybody off in the room and then went, right when he had everybody listening he just trashed everybody in the room and this whole thing so the lady who ran the event with her Fuck. i run shit fucking dress she had on was telling him she goes she told him to get off the stage and he's just going, and he's going, no, I'm not getting upset. She goes, she goes, I put this thing together. He goes, bitch, I don't give a fuck. And he just kept going. Oh, so then, man. No, he, he wouldn't get off the stage. That's and then they, they turned off the microphone. No. And there was a piano on stage. So he sits down at the piano and starts playing the piano, which he can't. And I remember he's just sitting there banging it. And as she's yelling at him, he just looked over the impish smile ever, just looking over, smiling. And I was just so fucking happy he did it. And I I was so mad that I didn't think to fucking why I went up there like an hat in hand. <laughs> hey, my dad's wacky and just ate my balls. It was it was I mean I pair of puppy. Oh. That's brilliant. He, he was one of those friends, one of those comedians who could be your fucking hero in any given moment by doing something like that. Yeah. Like God <laughs> damn it, I love the fact that he fucking had the balls. He was uh oh. he was very he was impossible to own Patrice because there's nothing you could dangle in his face mm. that he couldn't walk away from. Like he literally Obviously, could, yeah. could not Obviously. be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when the seller tried to kick him out? The seller kicked him out and then we all he hung around the corner so we would all do our sets and then leave because we wanted to hang around with them. So Wait a minute, why did the seller kick him yeah. out? Well, he had an I, argument with Manny, yeah. I think, but it was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. I, I watched it happen, and Manny mistook. Uh, Patrice was asking him if he had false teeth. And he, he, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but, like, we God. would tease each other all the time there, and he was, it was getting to... I, I think that was something Manny was sensitive about because he was 70, and it was one of the only things, I guess, that was, that was like his Achilles. And Patrice really didn't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't saying anything bad about this. No, no, no. I, mean, I got kicked out for a minute. Everybody, <laughs> at some point, you know, you, you're you're late or whatever. You do whatever, and then they they got to throw down the gauntlet. So, mm. so I think he didn't want to come back. I'm saying I think that like he just said fuck this. I'm not going back, and and he just didn't want to go back. Well, all I know is 
So now we would just all go hang where he was at. So then they had to let him back in. You just you couldn't beat him. Oh, just, so because everybody was leaving because we the were club. all going to yeah. leave. Yeah, and then they, you know they want people hanging around or whatever. So they had to let him back in. <laughs> And then he figured that out going, that was kind of golden handcuffs that they let me back in. So then what he did was he was back in, but he wouldn't put him for spots and would just go down there and hang out. It was always chess with him. Oh, I yeah. Know. yeah. yeah it, was, it was awesome. You got to respect that, though, man. Yeah. He, uh, I, he was at Caroline's one night and, he, and there was a work, like a Christmas party there. Fucking 25 people and their female boss. So, of course, like you're waiting for it. You're like, when's uh -huh. he going to attack the boss? <laughs> Oh, and finally, he gets around to it and he goes, let me tell y'all how she likes to get fucked. Oh, wow. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, see how she wear her hair up in that bun? She likes to let that shit down. She likes a dude to wrap that shit around his fist five, six times <laughs> and pull her head down like a horse and go, bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. All of her employees are laughing at her. She's staring at Patrice, dude, like Venom. And Patrice just goes, bitch, don't. Give me boss eyes. <laughs> I'll work for you. <laughs> uh, fucking maniac. Uh, That's fantastic. Gonna fucking miss him, man. Yeah, yeah. obviously. God damn. Want to thank Chris for calling in. Yeah, yeah really thanks, man. It, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm sure I'll see you guys tonight. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 yeah it is uh, a bummer. But well, you know. The fuck are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, that's the easy way Chris to get around. Chris is in great shape, so we're, that, we're good there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in decent shape. Uh, yeah. let's, let's work on a towel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he won't stop smoking. I feel like a fucking nudge ant. Every time I see him, I want to just go stop. Because he, he quit drinking. He's doing good. He's like, he looks okay, but fucking he won't stop smoking. Yeah. I just, it's like, will you stop? Fucking stop it. I need one vice. Ugh. Yeah, yeah he, he, he smokes a lot. He yeah. smokes a lot. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what we do next week. We just pick out a few guys to, you know. Guys, yeah. Even though people did say something to Patrice, we always feel like we could have said more. But again, he knew. He was he was the smartest guy in the room. I mean, he, yeah, he always knew. 24 hours either. Yeah, you know? he was going to make his own decisions. And it's it's unfortunate. They said even, look, with diabetes, even if you're totally thin and you, you jog, it can happen. But by overeating and stuff, and you just fucking put the odds through the himself. roof. Yeah, man, you make it much worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, See you tonight, brother. It was good talking to you. Uh, thanks a lot. All right, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Chris. Bye, Chris. Uh, Chris Rock, everyone. Yeah, that really did help Patrice, I think, when Chris, that day he was in, because it yeah. got to him. Because Chris wasn't coming at him like, you asshole. He was like, I wanted to give you. It was extremely real, remember? Yeah. And we I were think, like, whoa. And I think and Patrice, Patrice realized listened, it. too. Yeah. One of the, you know what? One of the only times you watch Patrice actually sit back and listen. <laughs> Instead no, of would, coming he, back with he, something. He would do that in rare occasions when, uh, and it was always when someone was being brutally honest with him. He would, he would actually uh, stop talking and making fun of you for mm -hmm. half a second. But, uh yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's, 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 you know, look, everybody always says too soon when somebody dies. It's, it's, it's a cliche thing to say. But with Patrice, I've just never seen it more applicable. This was such, yeah. you know, I, Geraldo was the first guy I knew in this business to go, and it was very upsetting. But Patrice was the first, I mean, I was friends with Greg, but Patrice was the first guy that I was really like, holy shit, like, this can happen, man. Like, mm. it can, you can go before. Even though you're loved and respected and have so much to say and, and are such a presence, you can go at any fucking time. It's, it's really scary, man, and it's, it's so upsetting because you know there was like it, seven more of those it, specials. Welcome to middle it, age, Joe. Yeah, uh, no kidding. <laughs> middle age is when you realize that life doesn't give a shit, that it, right. just, it doesn't, you know? Right. It, it's upsetting because he was young, but it's also, like you're saying, upsetting knowing what he was about to do. Yeah. With his career. It was like, you know. So there on was, both levels, it just, is, just sucks. Yeah, I have so wanted to see That's, that guy go to, go to that. Uh, <clears throat> it was going to be a whole new group of people who are going to meet him for the first time. Which I tell you, I can't oh, stress yeah. that enough. Watching somebody meet that guy when he was in that fucking mood, which he usually was. <laughs> yeah. I just love how he used to pick out. I remember one time this beautiful girl came in and she had this little scar. You could barely fucking see it. Oh, that motherfucker. He, he, he went right for it. Yeah. That's how you doing? Now uh, like that scar you got right there, right? And then immediately she's just all fucking uncomfortable. And just, he just brought it to this fucking real place that she, you know, hadn't probably been in since, you know, I don't know what. And it, he could just, I don't know. Did they I could, tell that story about him talking, telling that girl to shut up? Uh, her, that, could her be, voice? that could be a thousand stories. <laughs> was that at the cellar or no? That time we were at the cellar and that, those girls were all talking. 
Yeah, I think I told that when I called in. I'll tell it again. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, it don't matter. Just sitting there, like, you know, it's a loud bar, and, you know, women, their voices go up, it gets fucking, and he just goes, they sit there talking like, ah, ah, and he keeps glancing over there as he's trying to talk to me, and then he did that glance for an extra second. I'm like, oh, fuck, he's going to say something. <laughs> he's on, and he's he just going. picked out one, and he just goes, ma'am, miss, ma'am. And she finally looks, and she goes, what? And he goes, your voice. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, is it loud? And he goes, it's piercing. <laughs> right? And he just starts and just basically tells her to shut up. So then it, these girls are fucking gorgeous, too. So her two friends want to come to her rescue. So all three of them come over to Patrice. I'm like, oh, fuck, how the hell is he going to deal with this? And I don't know what he did. Within 30 seconds, he had them auditioning to figure out who had the best uh, sexy phone sex voice. Holy shit. And they were yeah. auditioning for him. And he was sitting there judging. And telling each one of them why, despite their looks, guys didn't find him attractive after like a third date. And he was so in there. Was wow. Hannibal Lecter. He yeah, was in yes. their fucking heads. Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. He was a psychologist, man. He really was a brilliant, brilliant, intuitive fucking psychologist, man. He just under, he read people immediately. He I just, know exactly uh, the way when you describe that, how I went, your voice. Yeah. Like he would just do that. Your shit. voice. Your voice. Yeah. What was better than him shushing people? It's what was funnier than that? Oh. Shh. <laughs> he used to do oh. that. He, he used to do that on the subway. He'd be on the subway and it would be jam packed with people and he'd just go and shh. And everyone would shut up for half a second <laughs> yeah. and then he would just start laughing. People would get so fucking mad. <laughs> and he was the one that brought that to the circle, right? Him and Keith Robinson are yeah. the two I could I never, I never sure heard that before. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where he, he, he would do it so loud. And he could do it so loud. He could do it yeah. in bars and everybody right. would shut up. Yeah. yeah. And, then and they, they all would look around like, where did that they come don't from? They realize why they're being shushed. And you keep hearing people start going, who keeps doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would beg him to do it at the cellar. He from the back of the room, I would like, just shush everybody. It was like asking someone to sing your favorite song and he would yeah. finally shush and the whole fucking restaurant would go silent and he'd be like why the fuck did we stop talking who is that dude it's like you got something on your shirt like the person would fall for it every yeah, yeah. fucking time that's so fucking funny oh, i think one time great. i was going out to his house in jersey we were way back in the day you know we were struggling we were on the fucking path trade mm -hmm. he did it like fucking nine times oh. to the point i was embarrassed going please <laughs> stop doing this <laughs> <laughs> you never say that to him no he's gonna just oh, do it more no and then i think the oh, entertainment was him watching me be Get so fucking uncomfortable. Right? uncomfortable yeah oh, God. and he could diffuse yeah. almost anything too like the, even though he was a big guy he was so fucking, he just had that light, man. He was so fucking charismatic. Like, he mm -hmm. could diffuse any type of aggression. Um, he just knew how to fucking let the air out and, and make people. Uh -huh. Manny had the same ability, Manny Dwarman. No matter how heated it got, in a second, he could diffuse it, whatever. Almost I love that. You know something? That's what I loved about Manny the best. Is because I came from that stupid Irish. You get into a fight and then you hold on to it right. for fucking nine right. years. Right. Yeah. He had that thing. He had a, he had a, he could actually. Just make it be like that. He come over, hey, and you just see that Manny laugh, and you just start fucking laughing. Be like, I don't. And then you start thinking, this is how we should have done it in my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Manny had a fight one time, one of our brush. rare fights, like a real argument. And I might have told the story already, but Manny, uh, I didn't go into the cellar for forty days. Uh, I stayed out for over a month. I was so fucking mad at him, and he was mad at me. And I finally went back in. Um, because I just missed it, and, and I, he and I walked by each other, and we just kind of looked at each other and said, hello, hello. And then we were at this, in the back, and it was very <laughs> tense when he was at the table with me. Um, and he said, uh, he said, I have some uh, pictures of you that I want, I want to give you that I took. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And he goes, let me go get them out of the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> immediately, immediately everything was okay. He made That's me laugh. funny. <laughs> so immediately, he fucking just That's took great. the air. That was another one. That was another rough one. Manny, Manny was terrible. Manny was the, and you know what I yeah. loved about Manny? Manny, uh, Manny fucking, he loved, he loved people, like he loved the debate. Loved like it. he loved sitting there and like, uh, so he didn't want to be mad at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I learned a lot about not being an angry psycho just through <laughs> that guy, like how he had that ability. And interesting enough, Bobby Kelly, living with Bobby Kelly. Bobby's really good at that after you have this epic, Is I'm going to choke, yeah. Really? Choke you to death. That he can actually, you know, yeah, yeah, he starts going, listen, dude, and he bro, and all yeah, that shit, and you're like, yeah. and he's like, look at this fucking idiot, I can't be mad at him. <laughs> he'll, yeah, and Bobby, Bobby does the great thing, too, where he'll go, uh, he'll be like, it's okay, dude, I'm sorry I snapped at you, right? And and then, like, he'll be talking, and he'll go, he'll go, I mean, you know, nobody's got to 
think about that you got all this fucked up shit that you do and it really pisses everybody off or whatever. Like, he'll slip it in. Oh, and man. And you'll, you'll just be going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'll go, I'm fucking with you, stupid. You know, and you're like, ah, eh, you cocksucker. Like the, like the battered wife. Yeah. I, wor I worry about Bobby, too, with his eating. I mean, we tease him and stuff because we're friends, but it's like, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, my friend, it's like, you worry about, like, dude. I said that to him yesterday. We went in, for, we went in, he's going to kill me for telling this story, but we went in to go get a fucking sandwich. And, you know, I picked up this little bag of chips, and then, he, that? It, and then oh, he picks up this big bag of chips. What's that? What's that? Oh, yeah. Just, just, just please ignore it. Okay. It's better big that way. Big bag of fucking <laughs> chips. I go, Bobby, you don't need all those. So then he grabbed, like, two little ones. I go, put one of those back. Two. He and I go, all two right. little ones. Yeah, I don't know what he's... Uh... He, look, we, were, we went the other day. I made him walk with me to the Levi's store. Uh, More fucking jeans? Like pants you and jeans. Like, like, what are you, what are you doing? Joe's what are you, jeans, raping women and you're throwing jeans out when you finish? He's the jean yeah. killer. Yeah. I, um, the blue jean killer. Blue jean killer. The Pepsi Cola rapist. Uh, for, the, uh, for each trophy, he needs a new pair of jeans. Ah, yeah. uh, come on, guys. That's just dark. Yeah, he has a bunch of jeans with cum and blood. Right. Fucking like a long blonde <laughs> hair samples. Oh, and it all yeah. came out of the same hole. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I made him walk. I had to return some <laughs> But pants. seriously, folks. I had to wear <laughs> Come on, I had to go for it. I had to return some pants, and uh, I made him. I was with him and Don, or his wife, for breakfast, and uh, and I'm, I go. I got to return some pants. Come with me. And his wife's like, yeah, "You should go." And we're walking, and he's yelling at me, "Fucking stupid cocksucker!" I want to. And I go, "Dude, do you understand? I care about you. This is good." That we're doing this. And we went into Starbucks. I'm like, don't get, like, I'm not trashing him. I'm like, don't get any fucking cookies, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm worried about you. It's like watching. Don't do it. Because Bobby's a compulsive guy like I am with sex. And like, you know, like, like everyone is. But he, he just, the food is such an addiction, man. And it's a fucking hard one. It's it's hard because you cannot, we've talked about it, but you can't be fucking abstinent from food. Yeah, you got to eat some. And it's like, uh, it's like I worry about him. Like, come on, dude. Because I, I took some, I sent some pictures of me, Bobby, and Patrice from Brazil. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I was just going through some photos. Was Bobby a lot thinner back yeah, then? Yeah, man. And it's like he has the ability to get thin. He really yeah. does. Because Bob's yeah, like yeah, a fucking... Yeah. He could just lock on to, like, working out and work out. You know, he, he can do it. Yeah, it's on or off with him. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see him do it for his own health. It's like... Do -do 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 <laughs> what is the theme from Fat Cell? This is what he's, he's whatever the fuck oh, that God. is. Yeah, there you go. Dude, dude. dude, I'm done with sugar, dude. I'm fucking hitting the gym, dude. I'm doing sit ups. Did it, dude. Captain <laughs> dude. Did it, dude. Got a weight loss app for Getting my shitted, iPhone. Dude. Gonna get my fucking abs. <laughs> <laughs> that last, like, <laughs> he really oh, is at that level of fat where he should just have the gray on gray sweatsuit from Sears. <laughs> oh God, that's fucking. Uh, All right, well, well, yeah. Now that we expressed our concern, let's trash him. Yes, yes. Well, yes. Well, well, you gotta do it that way. I got no concern around. for uh, Roland. It's a good point. Yeah, you know, uh, what? You know what? I love Roland. Oh, um, but Bobby's one of my Roland closest knows. Well, yeah, yeah. friends. I've had I've had sit downs with Roland. He knows. Yeah, yeah. he knows. He, he scares me. Dude, food is fucking terrible. He scares me. Roland, I say, it's Roland was just we, when we were watching that baby calf get birth, uh, get given birth to, and a <laughs> cute little calf face. <laughs> Roland just goes, "All I see is veal." <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Roland. What's Roland. up with my stress? <laughs> we oh, he blames us. We don't Get like the your jet hat. Here. Yeah, what's up with the jet hat? The new jet What are you wearing that for? What you, why are you wearing that? It's fucking horrendous. You don't have the right head for that. Patrice would have looked great in that head. Yes, he, he would have. Oh, uh, yeah. I know. Are you uh, loving the Jets? Yeah. We're a little nervous with the Sanchez. Jets, New York Jets. Jets, Jets, Jets. He did all right yesterday, right? Yeah. yeah. Dude, the Jets can, they know the how Jets to win does. in the end, though. They're 7-5. I uh I I wouldn't want to play those guys. Packers are rough. Oh, Packers tough. are great. Packers are ridiculous. Yeah. The Niners don't count them out. No, the th Niners. I think if they, had, if they if they had a quarterback. Is Drew Brees not good? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Now you're thinking. I'm thinking Saints. Niners. Well, let me put my two cents into this. You don't like football. No. That a boy, Joe. I, I'm On telling contrary, you something. this guy. It's Niners. a good year. It's a good year for football, I say, man. Would you just, would you just, I, I mentioned Drew Brees because uh, he did, but I was thinking Saints. I haven't seen a player like Drew Brees. 
since uh, I would say Namath was the last time I've seen somebody like play oh, like Drew Brees. Let me beat Bill. Oh, oh, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm very oh, serious. Joe. I'm <laughs> very serious. Oh, oh, Joe. Who, said, who said that, Joe? Oh, you didn't hear the Joe. whole conversation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? You're a Pete here. <laughs> Drew, Drew Brees is... Oh, Joe. He's the old stuff. Uh, <laughs> All right. I thought that was going to be... What's the matter, Joe? You tired of being left out of the conversation? He's wanted to do her. Yeah. <laughs> like it's burr. really mean, but really true and funny. <laughs> the eyes laugh get, and it hurts. The eyes get real squinty. Yeah. Oh, and he doesn't look oh, at you. Jesus. I'm like, oh, what's the matter, Joe? This one, too. Oh, Jesus, Joe. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> nice, long Jesus. Yeah. Just a fucking... Nah, you got to sit like that. Joe. <laughs> Can't tell if you're doing me or an 80-year-old 80, 80 uh, fucking vaudeville guy. I... I I did not. Bill guy. I, I, didn't, I really didn't have the reference. I was trying to think of that. that what, what where the hell did they? Poughkeepsie. Where the fuck did all those old Jewish guys go? Oh, Catskills. Catskills. Bill. That was what I was looking for. Old, yeah. old vaudeville guy. Yeah, I funny. wanted to ask you when you were telling that Patrice story about the, uh, the, you know, the animal thing, and you said you wish you did that. Yeah. Was that before the Philly thing? Yeah. Because you had your moment where you you turned it in Philly. Oh, yeah, I mean, show. look, I, I, it's not like I hadn't snapped on crowds, but right. I was so like. It was different. It was a benefit, and I was sitting there, and there was there was some people there. Somebody oh, from NBC so, was there, so I was in this oh, fucking. Yeah. So you felt like you know what? I can't, even if I want to, I I just can't. Go I have there. to be a professional, gotcha. right. I and I, I felt like uh, gotcha. it was. I made. I, I basically kept giving them respect when they were showing me none. So I, oh, I oh, it was one of the worst feelings. Now I understand. That's yeah. Now what you just said it, it's it's not about. You it, thought there was way too the the people were way too important in the audience to yeah you know, the fuck around. Cast from TV shows were there. Gotcha. Everyone was dressed up. This was you know I didn't have a, like any sort of agent going. Maybe somebody from CAA is here. Like yeah, I was yeah. I was in that stupid. No, it was a great story. A deal. It was a great story, but I was confused because I'm like, nah, Bill would fucking do that. But now I get it. Patrice now addressed it. it the way you wished you had addressed it as a comic. Like, ah, he was yeah. being... All, yeah, I've been there too. And man. also, I grew into that. Like, Patrice came in <laughs> like, like that. that. He came yeah, in was, like that. He actually had to tone it down and remember to do material. Standard equipment. <laughs> <with him. laughs> you, you, they yeah. should like you. Yeah. yeah. No, he, from day one, doing stand-up, he w was already there. It took me, it took me years. Mm. And, you know, obviously getting to see a guy his caliber, it was, uh, you know... Ah, it's the worst, worst, his laugh, fucking day ever. We've talked about his big yeah. dumb laugh, but anybody that Greatest thinks Patrice was mean when you when you made him laugh like that, like you you really felt like a funny person. Oh yeah, yeah, it was like when he fucking let go. Like you that's know. the guy I think of when I think of Patrice. Not mean or and people have had horrible experiences with him because he he, he 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 was at times uh, fucking. Uh, believe me, there's a lot of people not sad today. I, I said there's as many happy as sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he was mean to certain comics unnecessarily, and um, you know, look. At, at one point, he went back and started apologizing to guys because he felt bad about the interactions he had had. Like he has a conscience, but he gave you respect, man. You know, he gave you that over-the-top laugh saying, fuck, that was funny. It's funny was funny, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think one of the hardest I saw anybody make him laugh was the time Voss did that bit. Hey, you know, what time is it? He, there was this Asian guy walking down the street. Like, you know, he's in the middle of moving, and he had all these boxes. And the joke is you basically go, hey, what time is it? And right. as the guy looks down at the watch, you walk away. Sure. <laughs> and just the look of exasperation because the guy had to adjust the weight of the boxes. Like, I thought Patrice was, was going to fall down. Was that in front of Boston? The Boston, yeah. remember that? And yeah. he was... <laughs> He like he actually started running. He was laughing so hard. If you can imagine yeah. trying to run away from the he, laugh, he yeah. ran like like <laughs> from his own laugh yeah. and like leaned on this car and was laughing so hard. And the laugh was so great. I remember thinking like I wish I I could make him laugh that hard because yeah, I was yeah. like and, and it was that you know the, it was out there in the street, so it was echoing off the buildings. It was just. It yeah, just was great. fucking, it was awesome. Yeah, anytime you made him laugh, it was just fucking gold. Oh God, it's like, right, oh, man, man okay, Ooh. good. Patrice I'll, Levin? I, kinda, I, can be, I can be funny at some point. And the <laughs> impish <laughs> smile, too, you're right. That impish, there was that fucking, that weird, like, I know I'm yeah, being yeah. naughty fucking he, smile. He knew exactly what he was doing yeah. at all fucking yeah. times. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> his disdain for authority, I fucking. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I fuck. I remember one time we would drive. We used to drive down to New York in my piece of shit truck. I had this '83 Ford Ranger, vinyl seats. You know, we leaned all the way to one side because he's like, I can barely shift the thing, right? And uh, I remember getting we got pulled over by the cops, 
And I'm just typical white guy. I'm like, I was speeding. Yeah. He got me. Fuck it. And I'm sitting there next to the guy comes to the window. I just see, Pat I can feel Patrice oh. staring a hole through this guy to the point. I'm like, I'm going to get the shit kicked out yeah, of me because, because of you. this. I was speeding. The speed limit is fucking 55. I was doing 75. Stop <laughs> staring at this guy. And Patrice goes, he had like this whole coat of on. It's the way. It's the way he's talking to you right now. Oh, I man. fucking hate these cops. And then it became this whole topic of race on the way down that I don't get it. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, you know, they're kind of dicks to us, too. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah, also it's... have to come up to the car and be worried that they're not going to get shot. So they have to have. So I was obviously taking the cop side, and it was just like, I remember I, I had no saliva left in my mouth. <laughs> like five, you know, he could just out-debate you. I think we just, we, just, we just stopped talking by the time we got there. But, but we had this one moment on the trip that we always got a big kick out of. There's this tunnel that you go through on the uh, Merritt Park. Parkway. And we used to always joke that it was this James Bond kind of tunnel. So one time we were going down there through there, and he actually brought the James Brown, uh, James, James, Bond, James Bond. Bond soundtrack cassette. This is how long it is. And he popped it in, and right as we go to the tunnel, I was like, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> and we were driving through. And then when it went, bow, 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 we both looked at each other like we were in a spy movie. Bow, bow, bow. It, became like, it became this fucking tradition. Every time we drove down, we'd be in the middle of talking. We both knew we were going to oh, do it. That's great. Nobody said anything. And then we would, one time we, we were driving down with Bobby Kelly, and that was the best because he had no idea. And we were sitting there talking, and, and you know, these motherfuckers, blah, blah, blah. And we got to the bridge, and then we go, shut up, Bob. We popped it in, and it's like going, down, 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 down. Bob <laughs> just starts doing that high-pitched laugh. What the fuck? <laughs> and then we just looked at each other, came out the other side, and it was, Bobby laughed for like 10 miles. It was fucking. <laughs> it he was, told me it that was story. Awesome. Uh, it, was, it was fucking. We had so many. Funny. So many great times, man. He told yeah. me about you guys doing that recently, and he was telling me, he goes, he goes, dude, they would drive through the tunnel, dude, and as soon as they hit the tunnel, they'd go, da 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 And I go, what the fuck are you talking? What are you singing? No, we put, and he we goes, put, James Bond, dude! <laughs> <laughs> no, we had it down, right when it go, ba na 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 we both look at yeah, each other. Yeah, look at each other. And then when it, when it, when it, was, it, it was like, go, da na na we'd look away back, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's fucking cool. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Yeah, and it, it's like a movie. Yeah. yeah, and when Bobby saw it, dude, I'm telling you, he laughed for fucking 10 miles going, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? And it was, uh, <laughs> it was awesome. And then we went down to New York and me and Bobby felt like little kids and Patrice just walked in and immediately started trashing the club owners. And I, I, I was just, and I remember thinking like, how does he think he's going to get in <laughs> yeah. doing this? And then he would because he just had the, uh, he would literally de-pants these guys and they were just like, they're yeah. so used to being like everybody just groveling, and Patrice would just come in and just you know bring them and down could, to bedrock. He could back any shit up with charm and charisma, mm -hmm. which is fucking like no one has both of those things. Where you can be a <laughs> utter prick so, and then be charming. <laughs> yeah, well, we have the prick part, but that charming part we're all a little lacking. Uh, we're working <laughs> on it. But he was funny. He was almost funny at will, and that was what got him out of it. Was because yeah. you couldn't argue that this guy is not hilarious like yeah. he, everyone you couldn't he uncomfortable situations he can make people laugh at him mm -hmm. all the time like just start to start trashing somebody where nobody knows him he didn't care <laughs> he didn't give a fuck and then people would listen and start laughing i saw him he trashed one time we were at montreal comedy festival and the original star of law and order really well respected actor he passed away <laughs> he came mm -hmm. walking up and i was like all in awe and patrice started making fun of his fucking raincoat and the guy loved it he just, like, he immediately was got... Was that Patri Orbach guy? Yeah. The I think, old guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jerry? Yeah. Who literally Jerry looked Orbach. like... I think it's Jerry, yeah. Yeah, and that yeah, was the thing. Matters. Like, when people immediately got Patrice, like, that was that was another, like, a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. then you immediately saw, oh, I bet this guy breaks balls, too. Like, he totally... <laughs> he, he didn't have, like, uh, that vibe, like, I'm the star of a TV show. He immediately thought it was fucking funny. And then I, then Patrice had that thing that like that's how people didn't realize that's how you got to him that if you actually could laugh at a trash and that then you'd get that that side of Patrice where he he showed you what a big hearted guy he was yeah 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 god damn oh and it just gets sadder by each story it it really yeah. does yeah. fucking horrible there were some wonderful savage beatings. Some fucking <laughs> verbal beatings and we've all been on the receiving end of them and oh. I don't think I ever got over that that bus beating. About oh, taking right. the bus. You know, and Kevin and, and them uh, came in and told that story, and this is what I never told, because I was sworn to secrecy. I got, after that trashing, 
I was still going to do the gig. Because in my world, it was an easy gig. Just to tell the listeners, it was basically you had to do stand-up on a bus. On a bus, yeah. To Yankee Stadium, and they, they, they pay you like 500 bucks, and you get a free World Series ticket. And they were all Braves fans. So I'm like, that's the easiest fucking gig ever. All I got to do is just stand there. Every time I have a problem, I go, Jeter sucks. Or, hey, look at the tits on her. And I would be fine. But they pounded me so bad for 45 minutes, I was still going to do it. Because I didn't give a fuck. But in the end, Patrice said, he said, Bill, you're a friend. He goes, I, I can't let you do that. <laughs> he goes, I will stand in front of that bus before, before I let you do that. He goes, you, ha you make enough money. Just buy a fucking ticket if you want to go. And I just remember that going like, oh, I should really have some sort of respect for myself. And that's what made me stop. And then I, this is where I was sworn to secrecy is I passed that gig on to somebody else. And they did the gig. I'll let them tell it if they ever come on this show. And uh, I asked them the next day, I go, I go, I go, how was the game? He goes, oh, it was fucking awesome. I go, I go, how about the, how was the gig? He goes, dude, it was brutal. Goes, I'm not going to lie. He goes, he goes, I ran out of shit. We hit traffic. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Yeah. Traffic, to, I didn't take into consideration there was going to be right. traffic going to a World so Series you, game at the Bronx. You had to perform for the whole ride, no matter how long the ride lasted. Oh, it wasn't like you're on the I don't think Patrice oh, was shit. ever, was ever funnier. He said, he goes, so when they bring you up, are you going to come out of the bathroom? Or he goes, are you going to walk up those little stairs? <laughs> uh, the, the, one of my favorite ones, he said, he goes, he was doing an impression of me. After uh, after at the end of the end of the uh, the gig, I was gonna be standing up, going like, "This is gonna be a visual joke." But you know, thanks a lot, everybody. You guys have been great. And then I sit down with my back to the crowd, <laughs> and, 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 as, and as they all get up, I'm looking over my shoulder, going, "Oh, thanks a lot." Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just one of those things. It was the easiest thing to trash somebody for. And then all the fucking Mount Rushmore people of trashing. Norton was there. Voss was there. Keith was there. Little Patrice Kev. and Little Kev. Oh, shit. Dude, and two of them. Oh. I never I, I never would have come. They literally did a headlining set. <laughs> and it was one of those awful nights at the cellar where there was only, it was like like a third full. So there was, every, people who didn't even know me were hearing it. And they were either <laughs> laughing. Or I, one girl looked at me and she went, oh, and she saw me. <laughs> Dude, and I just was sitting at the bar, shifting my weight. And all I wanted to do from 30 seconds in was run out of there. And I just, I couldn't. I had to sit, because that's the rules. I had to sit there and take yeah. it through. And every time I thought it was going to end, somebody else would just come back with something else. <laughs> and it just, it. dude, I'm telling you, that one, the Eddie Ift. Oh, my God. Was that, that was one that, were you there for that? It was, was when uh, Patrice, a uh, comedian Eddie Ift, who's a funny guy, but Patrice killed him one time. They argued about something. And it was so bad. Me and Voss were there. And, like, literally, we, we didn't even, you just want to jump in on a teasing. We couldn't even jump in on a teasing. It was, it, it felt abusive, almost, like, to oh, yeah, jump like, in. Wow. Yeah, some, so somebody joked that, I don't remember. that we need to call him to make sure he's okay. Eddie, I actually, out of everything we said, summed up Patrice in a great way one time. He goes, sometimes I would walk into the cellar. And I would just think, fuck, he saw me. <laughs> Which I thought was exact, because I used to feel that. I used to feel that. Like, you would oh, come walking shit. in, and you would literally, like, dude, you used, before you'd walk in, you'd look at your clothes going, okay, is everything straight? <laughs> is my gonna, hat? Is my hair messed up? They're going to fucking rail me about this oh, one dude, really bad. I yeah. have closets full of clothes that got retired <laughs> from the <laughs> trashing. And I, I'm going to be honest, dude. Like, as much as I do that shit on stage, I'm not that guy off stage. Like, Norton and those guys really... Were those guys, and I used nice to, shirt, I used yeah, to oh really right. he take a fucking pounding down there. He I was really trashing did. some guy's hoodie one night. I forget who the comic was. We're in front of the cellar, and Patrice was trashing his hoodie so bad. And he's going, look at his nigga's hoodie. Look at his nigga's hoodie. <laughs> right? And he goes, he goes, take that shit off, man. Take that fucking hoodie off. And the dude unzipped it, and he was wearing, like, a spandex shirt. Oh, and he goes, shit. put it the fuck back on. <laughs> put it back on, man. And it was like... The, it was like so. It was so oh, fucking fast no. and so insulting. Like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> we were laughing so fucking hard. I love hard. when he used to call like older white people the N word when he was mad at them, <laughs> yeah. and he would talk to them like it was some dude on the street. And they, they, so he would be coming at them like forty different ways that they did not <laughs> handle. You can only see their clothes moving and the pounding that they were taking from the guy. And uh, totally, man. Oh. I never said that, dude. Now that everybody's fucking dropping, utmost respect for like the, the quickness you get, Norton has. And, oh, I, and all those guys, man, Jesus they're just fucking yeah, it's just really, a, 
One of my best laughs I ever had was on this show when you, you called somebody a zilch. And I literally, <laughs> the way he said it, I swear to God, like three weeks later, I was eating like raisin bran and the shit came out of my nose. I don't know why I was thinking it. I think because you were eating like a breakfast sandwich. I was eating breakfast. Some, there's some sort of fucked up connection. I was sitting there with me, yeah. and I was eating fucking something. I just thought, he went on you know, one of those Norton rants. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking zilch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit just came out of my nose. So. Thanks, man. I don't know. Seriously, dude. Yeah, it was so, the most. Uh, it was the mo moving up to the city with you guys. With you guys already being was one of the most intimidating things you could ever do because you walk into the. You know, you come from the open mic scene in Philly. <laughs> And you go, all of a sudden you're like, it's your first night in New York. You walk into the cellar. It's Norton, Burr, Patrice, Bobby, Voss, DePaulo, Keith, oh, Keith, Keith Geraldo, yeah. DePaulo. Geraldo. I forgot DePaulo. Oh, and you're yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> oh, it's that we're not in Kansas moment, not to use yeah. a cliche, but I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, and just watching that you're just like, I better shut the fuck <laughs> up. Uh, yeah. Don't yeah. talk. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I got to tell you something. Oh. The amount of comics who came down there and took one ass beating and just hit out up at the strip <laughs> and the fucking uh, 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 stand-up New York for the rest of their time just there. never fucking Never came, came back. back down, dude. Like, it was a serious caning. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you never really got beaten into the gang. It just, <laughs> it just, kept, yeah. it just continued to happen. I remember nights, even Keith. Remember that night? Keith was wearing something, and somebody got him with something so funny. He literally stood up. That's how I got the idea. He literally stood up and ran out of there. And I remember thinking about that bus pounding one. <laughs> Why the fuck didn't I ever think this shit was going to run out? Why did I just sit here and take it? Sometimes you got to just leave. Like when you yeah. feel the roll starting and you got to go, you're like, I'm out. I bet no with a few. Right? Yeah. But the worst is when, like, Artie, Artie will, like, they got smart to guys trying to run out, and they'll block you. Like, you'll try to dash out of the fucking spot. Where the fuck you going? Sit there and take your fucking pounding. Uh, who got me mad one time? I came, this was when I was opening for Dice. It was probably 99 or 2000, and I was at the cellar, and they were killing me for, probably for opening for data, you know, but, or whatever they were doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Patrice. Patrice was killing you. What was he saying? I don't remember. Oh, he was saying how much of a lackey Norton was to, to fucking dice. So he started imitating dice, calling Jim up, going, hey, let's go to the mall. Oh! And was, dude, fucking pounding the table. Dude, that was a great smashing. Oh, and I was, I was overtired because I used to fly home in the morning and land at like 6 p.m. and then go right to the cellar. And uh, cause it was before, obviously, the morning radio. And I'm sitting there. I think it was Patrice that pulled my chair out. And I was like, don't touch my fucking chair. Like, that's when I decided to get indignant oh, now and you're, angry. Yeah, now you're I, yeah, I made it real. Like, don't touch my fucking chair. And that just made the pounding worse. <laughs> <laughs> it just made my beating worse. And I had to take it. <laughs> Jesus. It's Dude, so I remember, like, bro. times of, like, trying to sneak out of there. And you just literally... Keith be like, where you going, Burr? You got nowhere to go. Sit down. <laughs> you got nowhere to go. And then you'd like an idiot you try to make something up. I got it, y'all. You got an audition for what, stupid? <laughs> You're not getting it. Nobody cares. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, fucking brutal. Sometimes when you're getting beat up, it was fun, though. Like, I literally have been killed by those guys. And you're thinking, like, it is it is fun because I know I'm loved oh, here. Yeah. And I'm getting pounded by some of the funniest fucking guys in the country. It was It was kind of... A weird thing to enjoy, like even when yeah, you were getting killed. You only, he only, I got upset a lot. He only got upset a couple of times. But I don't know what time. Like he was always good nature. My time Jim was playing chess with Bobby. Bobby's on the phone too. And uh, fucking uh, Patrice is just being just fucking with Norton. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, he goes, Jim, what would you do if I punched? <laughs> what'd you do if I punched you right in this chin right here? And, like, <laughs> and then he just started. Oh, shit. And he just started. I don't know. I just watching the way Jim was laughing. I literally learned from you guys because I came from such an angry background where it wasn't done with any sort of love. That's why I sucked at that game because I didn't take it in love. And then I also went right for your jug. I was the guy. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, at least my mom didn't die. <laughs> That's how I initially played it. So it took me. The just took everyone out of it. Wrecked the whole Sorry, thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby was like that too. Like, and he, but Bobby had a way of saving it. Bobby, Bobby would go for the jugular, and then then everybody would be like. Jesus Christ, and just go, Bob Kelly. <laughs> Bobby's on the line. I butchered it, sorry. Bobby. 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 Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing, Bobby? How you doing, man? Hey, Bobby. Bobby. I, was, I was at that pounding too, bus, Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were that one? That was, I was I'm the one that you come up to the front, the yellow line, and that's the stage. <laughs> the yellow line? <laughs> I don't know, Bob. I got to admit, it was all kind of a blur, you know? <laughs> I still have brain damage from that one. <laughs> 
that was an ep- that was one of the time we went over it one night. I remember Patricia was at the cellar. <laughs> that's so funny that, that, that he got kicked out of the cellar and then back in, and then he just refused to play there. That's funny. <laughs> Dude, I heard I didn't I wasn't there for this one, but one an epic one. Bobby got off easy because it was overseas, so none of us saw us. There was oh. something in Amsterdam about a hotel room. You guys went over to do a gig over there. It was you, Keith, and Patrice? Well, I you know. Yeah, it was Keith and Patrice and me, and it was, uh, they put us, they tried to put us in this, you know, boutique hotel right in the led, red light district, but it was really just like, you know, a, a flop house <laughs> to save money. And, you know, Patrice and Keith flipped out, and I was just wanted to be a people pleaser, so they had me back to Amsterdam, and I'm like, it's not so bad. And, uh, yeah, it had like, it had, it was a square room, four metal bunk beds. Ugh. <laughs> And it had a, a, a five by five window. It's a hostel. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they complained, and I didn't. I told the guy, "I'm fine. This is great. I'm I'm cool here." And they, the guy was lying to him, like, "Yeah, it's thirty minutes away," and blah blah blah, trying to get him not to go. They were like, "Fuck you. Pick us up. We're out of here." They left. It wound up only being ten minutes away. It was the nicest hotel ever that they put Patrice and Keith up. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to spend the night by myself in this fucking hostel. I was fucking shit in my pants. And then the next day I come out to get in the van as they're picking me up to go to the show. I had bought a black shirt and black polyester pants, but I didn't know that I bought bell bottoms. <laughs> oh, no. So I came out. I came out of the hostel, and it looked like I had a fucking black evening gown on. (laughs) (laughs) The pounding pounding that went on in that van, I'm not even kidding you. It was so brutal and so rapid fire between Keith, and you know Keith's laugh, and Patrice's laugh. Not only did Patrice hit you with a fucking crazy fucked up, just right on the money slam, his laugh just mushed it into your face. Oh, and, and drowned out anything you had coming back with. There's nothing you could... His laugh was like the extra just foot on the face in the <laughs> mud. And I remember the guy, Franz, who didn't laugh at us all week, thought we were assholes, had to pull the fucking van over. He was laughing so hard. <laughs> was this is a French guy, too. I don't even think he understood English that well. Then... I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a, a tear in my eye. Like, I welled up. <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly, honest to God, sometimes I got pounded by these guys. Because it's hard to fucking take somebody because they're being so honest with you. I look like I got raped and I was somebody's bitch in prison. <laughs> I mean, and I fucked up and I was so scared to walk out of that hotel with my fucking bell bottoms on your evening gown <laughs> and then the fact that they didn't even give me a second you know there's some comics you'd be like hey what's up man nice pants and they just talk about you behind your back none of our crew would do that it, it was sometimes that hurt so bad that you i mean dude i, I literally had tears in my eyes and it they, they, they told me bob they told me that they actually invited you over to their great hotel that they stayed at and then you came walking in and acted like you were going to stay there, and they didn't let you. They made you go back to your <laughs> flop house. <laughs> they said after the thing, Patrice looked back and saw me. My feelings were hurt. He saw that I was legitimately my feelings were hurt. And he goes, Bobby, you can come with us tonight. And I go, I go, can I? He goes, absolutely not, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was listening before with the, uh, the weight stuff, and I, I really, it just... It really bugs me to no end that Joe DeRosa is fucking saying that I need more help than him. <laughs> the fact that he looks like his body is any character out of a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> Joe really I, is the wild card. Like, Bobby's the obvious choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when you gamble, you always got be- to pick a couple of upsets if you want to go yeah, undefeated pass. on the card. Yeah. Bobby's yeah. the pass line. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> <On> the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still on the board, dude. I'm telling you. And, and don't forget about that fucking lunatic sitting next to you with the megaphone in front of him. Who, Anthony? Okay. Yeah, we're going we to save you, too, you fucking Howard Hughes. He's not going to come out of his house one day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like my house. Jesus Christ. Nice. How are they going to find like my house, my beers, and my guns? How how and where are they going to find you in that house when it all goes down? I, I say in the... Uh, <laughs> Let's see. 
<laughs> See, I mean, that was a logical question. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, gonna who's going to be brave enough tub. to go wait, into wait, the wait, house? Wait, wait, here we go, here we go, here we go. What do you got, Buff? I, I, it's going to be, it's going to be in the hot tub. There's going to be two young girls dead with him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's going to be, there's, he's going to have his fifty cal. Coming out like uh, a legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Anthony's going to be the first person where it's literally from my cold, dead hand. He's going to be dead <laughs> yeah, with the fucking gun. Take, oh, gonna, it's going to involve some, 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 uh, somehow, some sort of barricade. When you barricade it into your own house, the word estranged is going to be used. <laughs> Former. A lot of kids. Yeah. It's going yes, down like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hist history of... History of, yeah, you're going to yeah, find you in some room, things. some room behind a three-foot iron door. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes controversial. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Hope um. he's going to go in a park. <laughs> I can see him feeding birds and just keenly. He's going to last a while. He's going to last a like, while. Like uh, Michael Corleone yeah, gonna at the go, end. he's going to go like Michael Corleone. Three. Hold the chest. <laughs> Uh, just what the fuck. At least that one you lived long. <laughs> yeah, that's a good scenario. What the fuck? Obi's gonna Obi's gonna go learn Tai Chi in China. Oh, right then. <laughs> well, I guess we gotta yeah, go tai, home. Oh, tai Chi, why don't Listen, you try Bob. taping it right or something, Bob? Oh, fucking chip. When is he gonna go? Bobby, you missed the John Jones interview, and uh, and uh, Jimmy took a pretty good fucking hit today. Really? Why? Well, you know how Jimmy likes to try out some of this. Sean was great, and he gave me a uh, a shin a, kick, a shin to, the kick thigh. to my upper right thigh, and 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 uh, Jim Norton's <laughs> color left his body. Wait a minute, dude. I'm so sorry I didn't make it in. I I had some problems. That's right. Late last night. Um, he fucking know. dude. It was so bad. Can I just tell you what a fucking moron I am, Jimmy? What? You said yesterday, Jim Jones is coming in. You got John Jones is coming yes. in. Yes. I, who's that fucking? I thought you meant Tom Jones, the singer. <laughs> no, and I different. was like, you kept saying, we're you got to commit tomorrow. You're going to come in. I'm like, yeah. all right, all right. I was like, I don't give a fuck about Tom Jones. Yeah, it was Johnny Bones. <laughs> Johnny Bones. I didn't know it was John Jones. I'm a fucking moron. He, dude, he gave me a fucking. That was fucking Bob goes, why? Like, why would Tom Jones kick you? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> why would Tom Jones kick you? <laughs> It's like a David Lee Roth kind of showbiz kick. Dude, there's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like a can-can fucking... -can. That really is the difference between me and Bob, too, because when he said Tom Jones, I literally was like, ooh, well, that would have been exciting. <laughs> we all, Opie Twittered it, and I retweeted it, dude. He kicked me, and there's a better video of it going up. Sam has a better video. Yeah. He gave me a shin kick to my upper right thigh. It was. It hurt so... I, I literally couldn't breathe, and I had to leave the studio because I thought I was going to throw up. It was a shock to my system. I almost fainted from the kick. His color was fucked up. I almost fainted. I had why, to walk. Why? Why are you into this? Why? Uh, that why? one. That one I would never do again. Like it is a uh, masochistic thing. No, but it's not that. It's 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 just what yeah. what fan wouldn't want to? You get a chance. Well, come every on. Other it's like taking a catch from Peyton Manning or fucking Staubach. <laughs> every time I sit here going, maybe I'll. T nah, nah. Fuck that. He I want to see that make you kind of want to do it. I know. For a second, I, I, and then you realize, and then, nah, nah. How, no way. How, how big is he? Dude, how he's he? he's a oh, fucking. Yeah. He literally is sculpted. He's six, out of human tissue. He's got to be yeah. six five, right? Right. He's deceptively massive because he's so tall. I don't know. Yeah, he's and he's he's uh he's uh, he's a really sweet guy too. Really nice guy. Real right? nice. He smiles a lot, which would really suck when he's beating the shit out of you. Oh, Jesus, he would, Bob. He would probably keep smiling. <laughs> but he doesn't smile when he fights, man. No. They, they were showing clips on TV before of his fucking uh, some of those spinning elbows, and I just I don't uh, understand how people get up to take that. I don't comprehend how a man can take crazy. that to his face. Yeah, that's the worst person is the the, born, the you know because he's a Christian too. He really, really believes in God. And you know that other side of those people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, that's why he brought up Tim Tebow, I guess. How's your leg, Jimmy? I'm trying to see. I've been icing it too, because as per Kenny's, uh, oh. no bruise yet. Yeah, no. he's a he's a he's a he's a monster. He's gonna <laughs> he be a heavyweight. Fucking, his fucking little midget Schwarzenegger legs are hilarious. <laughs> Jim Norton really Tim, is in fucking shape. Those legs are ridiculous. From the They're from the waist shape. down, he is. From the waist down, from the waist up, I I, I, I literally look like I was just pulled off a clay table. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have legs that are sculpted? I, I don't know. 
You know how hard it is to how, bend down in the what? meat packing district? <laughs> it makes no <laughs> sense. It doesn't make sense. You're, You're right. You have your half sculpted. <laughs> you have calf muscles that, like, bodybuilders would kill for. No, I, I really, His belt is too tight. All the fat can't sit. <laughs> <laughs> sit it's so bizarre. I really do. They fucking, they rolling pin my feet up to my cock and balls, <laughs> and I belt it off. <laughs> and then his thighs are sculpted, too, man. Yeah, it's like, very it's good like thighs. a balloon animal that they squeeze the legs and everything. Just... <laughs> Oh, I'm an unfinished sculpture. You're you exactly right. You don't walk. You work out every once in a while. I lift three treat, times in a row. But then you treat yourself. Oh, yeah. No, that's it's very strange. No, that's genetics, dude. I it mean, is. Yeah. Yes. Gen yeah. yeah. I used to hate genetics. those guys in the gym. They lift once uh, and they're ripped. It's like, what? Uh, why, why? What is, is that nobody? about? Come on. Uh, uh, why did you not get shit for Because he knew I meant it as a yeah. horrible thing. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we got a really busy day. We got to wrap up. I would never yeah. say that. Talk to you guys later, man. We'll see you in a couple of See you later. I love you guys. I love you. Take care of yourself. Bye, everybody. Bill, what do you got? Anything? Bye, buddy. Podcast? Anything you want to promote? I'm here for You're free. Good? Yeah. That's it. No, I know that. But That's it. You might as well at least get a plug in. What the fuck? Dude, you know what? I wanted to tell you. Remember those tweets? Was I showing you those last night? The fucking tweets I got from some people? Like how showbiz never, never ends? Hey, Bill, sorry to hear about Patrice. I know he's a real good friend of you. Listen, I just opened this room in Reno. Oh, it's a 300-seater. Oh, I got a couple of those. Oh, yeah. fuck sorry about know. Patrice. Hey, can you do me a favor? Do you have Kevin Hart's number? Yeah, I would really yeah. like to. Yeah. Uh, Using your grief to segue into something. <laughs> yeah. Just, some so, asshole fucking... Now, look, this is hearsay, so if it's not true, fine. But right. if it is true, you're a fucking cunt. But some comic, female comic from L.A. supposedly tweeted, like, when he died, like, oh, you know, rest in peace, Patrice, something along those lines. And then, like, but I'll be at the uh, such and such. And, yeah. you, like, I plugged Ugh. her fucking gig off of his... Uh, MTV.com did fucking that. Fucking asshole. Really? MTV.com did, uh, they said, uh, they said, and this is, I'm not making fun of any of these people. It's just who they chose to retweet. Uh -huh. They said, like, uh, Charlie Sheen, Aziz, Sarah Silverman, and Nick Cannon all grieved the loss of their good friend Patrice O'Neill. I'm just oh thinking, did God. we not have enough credits? And then, at the, and then at the bottom it said, uh, uh, Vinny from Jersey Shore. Uh, said it's, it's going to be a huge loss to the comedy world. So they actually used Patrice's death as a way to cross promote cross promote Jersey, Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Show. Fucking believable. <laughs> Come on, dude. It's oh so my God. Patrice would have laughed his ass off. Of course. At yes. He would have blown yes. off his blown off his real friends. Yeah. He, he would have actually enjoyed. Fuck? He actually would have enjoyed our subtle humiliation at that. Yes. <laughs> That's what you get. Stupid. You're not famous enough. Yeah. yeah. He would have really <laughs> berated us. <laughs> what about Piers Morgan thinking uh, Patrice was a girl? That happened his whole fucking career. I remember yeah. I did but, it. But Piers is like selling it like, oh, this is a tragedy. She's going to be missed. She was so this. She was that. Yeah, but you knew that. You know, when the, the, Jim yeah. Norton is the only guy I've ever seen actually reads the book before the author comes in right. and then apologize and says, I'm only up to page fucking 201. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. The other of them just go like, you know, I, I, this book is just, you know, the... the, the I, thought I, it, I the just back, thought... The back cover, yeah. yeah they I, don't. I thought Piers was just a little different than the rest of them. Like, he, I don't know. Right, more thoughtful, maybe? Yeah, or, yeah. man. Nah. We had him in, and in the end, he's just like the rest of these. He was fun. He was a fun guy he to hang with for He didn't fucking I mean. know him. And may believe he did. Joe, let's not promote Caroline's then. This is about Patrice. Sorry. You'll have to come back and promote um, that you're going to be at Caroline's the 14th, 15th, and yeah, 19th. You wouldn't uh, want we to can't do, that, do it today. Joe, you get, you we too can't do it today. You're too much of a man, Please, Joe. please. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't mention do House of Comedy in Minneapolis. No, don't do it. Not no, today. No, no. <laughs> not today. But any other day, you're more than Out of respect for Patrice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Out of respect for Patrice, I will say this. I will be in Doylestown <laughs> this Friday and Saturday. And not only should you come, you should buy my merchandise. Why? It's what he would have wanted. That's right. True. There you go. Hey, um, That's true. Tomorrow we're finally going to breathe, and uh, e -Rock has, like, bonus Patrice stuff. Okay, Another good. five hours of Patrice tomorrow that he couldn't fit in the weekend special, so that's going to be great. And uh, we'll see you guys Wednesday. I just wanted to, I want to tell you about some yes, big Sam. news, though. 